I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. Sure. I just spent the past few days trying to really learn the terminology mm -hmm. and understand it completely. When you look at all the towns in the 14th district, I have a table here. Mm -hmm. There are only two towns that did not receive equalization aid. One of them is Cranberry and one of them is Monroe. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with two other definitions and numbers that exist. One of them is called the adequacy mm -hmm. budget, and one of them is called local share. Mm -hmm. And if you look at those two towns, the local, and I'll define them in a minute, sure. the local share for Mon I'm sorry, for Cranberry is to use a round number, 27 million, and their adequacy budget is 11 million. So their local share, which means what they could afford to pay mm -hmm. expensively is greater than the adequacy budget. And that's the same thing with Monroe. On Monroe, they have 162 million for local share and 116 million for adequacy. All the other towns, the numbers are reversed. Mm -hmm. So the way I would put this is, number one, we may hate the, the uh, school funding formula. We may think changes could be made and they should be made, no question. But what's more important is, when you see these numbers, they're actually not incomprehensible. They come right out of the school funding formula. Mm -hmm. So they're actually not all that hard to understand because I understand them now. <laughs> uh, um, but we still, we want to have changes, but we have to start by understanding the numbers. So um, you have to look at the adequacy budget, which means what you need to have a thorough and efficient education, the local share, what they think you can afford, they being whoever's doing the formula. But they who they? They, right. they, um, they is people who yeah. develop the formula and what they think can be afforded by the different mm -hmm. towns. There's no question that is one of the areas changes can and should be made. We need to look at it very closely and see what we can do to see if there's a way to get these numbers to flip. Right. But if you look, that's the reason why Monroe gets what it gets. It's mm -hmm. not mysterious. And when you have that that um, way of looking at the numbers, those two towns are the only two that got zero in equalization aid. Right. And that's mm -hmm. a very simple, simple definition of it. Now we have to move toward what we can do to have the, you know, have the formula change. Right. One thing I want to throw in that I think is important to mention, I'll just say it briefly, and we tried to do this years ago. I think the way that Monroe is unique is because you have 50% senior citizens. And we feel that, and we tried this about 2013, we put in a bill to deal with this. And it took the Senate president twisting everybody's arms on the committee, on the budget committee, to get people to vote for it. They did not want to vote for it because it didn't help their towns. But we got it through because he twisted arms. But then when it came to it being on the floor, he wasn't going to twist arms. People did not want to vote for it. It only helped about five towns in the state. They would have voted for it. Um, we just couldn't get it through. So my thinking is to try to push to have that made part of the new school funding formula. That would really help Monroe. I would be curious to revisit that actually, considering I, I feel like your senior the senior population has increased in New Jersey overall. You see it, you see communities popping up. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Yes, um, so I would be interested to see if and how you know that would be affected. <laughs> no, in other towns mm -hmm. now. Right. Right. Yes. No, there might be some others, and they, maybe it would be that would be something we could try. 